One of the smallest living things holds a secret that evolutionists just cannot face. The bacterial flagellum is so complex that it could not have appeared randomly. Bacteria use this structure for motion. If any part of the structure is missing, it ceases to function. This is another example of what we call irreducible complexity. In response, the evolutionists just love to tout Ken Miller's presentation at the Dover trial where he removed 40 proteins from the bacterial flagellum to reveal a type 3 secretory system as evidence against the fact of irreducible complexity. They seem to forget that every addition made to the type 3 secretory system would also have to be functional. Looks like the evolutionists have been beaten at their own game. I had to investigate. Some bit of confusion regarding the bacterial flagellum is that there is not, in fact, a singular bacterial flagellum. There are actually various versions of them with different varieties of proteins, and not all of them require the same amount of proteins. In general, bacterial flagella consist of three parts, a filament, a hook, and a basal body. The basal body generally consists of a rod and a series of rings which make up the stator and rotor. To go over each and every bacterial flagellum would take hours, so in the interest of time, for this episode, we will focus on the flagellum presented in the Dover trial by both sides of the debate. But instead of just removing 40 of the 50 proteins, let's start with a simple bacterial cell membrane consisting of an inner membrane, a peptidoglycan layer, and an outer layer. Each step will either be the addition of a functional protein or a pre-existing structure of proteins which already have other functions within the cell. It starts with a simple opening in the inner membrane, perhaps coated with protein, which creates a simple passive pore. From here, another protein called flea F attaches and creates a selective pore, eventually forming the M ring. In some versions of this system, more proteins, most notably flea G and flea M, attach, making the pore even more selective. Meanwhile, the F1 F0 ATP synthase is a structure which acts as a pump, adding protons to ATP. When added to the pore, it acts like a pump, regulating the flow further. Secretins are structures which act as a transport between membranes. They are essentially the outer membrane's equivalent of a passive pore. Depending on the organism, they are held fast by any one or more type of chaperone protein and added to the pore. At this point, we have a basic type 3 secretory system. Over time, some of any variety of adhesive proteins secreted by the system happen to remain bound and then compound to become a pilus. The longer it gets, the greater chance of attaching to an external substrate. It eventually attaches to the inner membrane, which offers stability. A bent pilus then allows it to wiggle and increase its chances of finding substrates. At this point, the pilus now functions as the system's rod and hook. The toll pile systems are pre-existing structures in bacteria which span the entire cell envelope and play a role in outer membrane opening during cell division. Its main constituents are the MOT A and MOT B proteins. When added to our modified type 3 secretory system, the proton activity causes it to spin the pilus slowly at first. This, again, increases dispersion, but also allows motion and serves as the stator. Eventually, the secretin reduces, freeing up the pilus, and becoming the P-ring. Then, a continuous expansion of chaperone proteins becomes the F-ring and or L-ring. Signal transduction proteins exist in nearly all types of cells. Depending on the variety, they act in the manner of receiving stimuli and even communicating. When attaching to this system, they act to further regulate the motion of the pilus by reacting more directly to stimuli. From here, filamental proteins secreted from the system begin to accumulate, forming the whip-like filament. We now have a complete flagellum. Like last episode, we can never be certain that this is the exact sequence leading to the bacterial flagellum. As it happens, this is only one published sequence of many in which each and every addition is functional. So from many angles, the bacterial flagellum is anything but irreducibly complex. Another example of how creationism taught me real science. Learn more about the real science behind other creationist arguments by watching other episodes. If there's a creationist argument you think I should investigate, please comment below. It may be the subject of a later video. In the meantime, subscribe and make sure you don't miss it.